How do you think to do that by reducing supply side costs by subsidizing on that end of it, or are you pushing on the demand side by putting income boost to consumers? You've just said supply side issues. We subsidize infrastructure based on supply side. Yeah, that's that's the at least it's easy to measure, etc. Demand side aspects. I might talk about them a little bit uh, when I'm, I'm I'm on the on the second side. The second dot of my agenda. Like I, I said previously, this is my agenda. No, okay. Yes, so the first part of the agenda is rural areas. We'll try to see what's happening here and then we'll go here. And then back to the rural areas. Any question? I was like a bit worried, maybe I was talking too fast. The place has gone very quiet. <laughs> but anyway, I'll, I'll also share some few, few, few jokes down the line. The, the, the second part of my presentation looks at application and services. I've just put a list of application and services I was thinking about quickly. And I'll say most of these are relevant now, and more, more of them will be coming on the list. Why do I not mention application and services? Because I think beyond infrastructure, this is where you, this is where actually you can have the revenue gains when you are addressing ICT services. If ideally, if I had money to put everything in terms of covering the country 100 percent, the only way you can grow revenue and make use of the infrastructure is by actually coming out with new innovative application and services. And uh, the list should not stop here. Developments in technology will get us as far. The most basic being voice service, then broadcasting service. Voice actually, broadcasting will be, should be more basic. This in terms of radio, then voice service in terms of telephony, television, SMS, money transfer services, gaming, etc. all the way down. The most interesting thing is that when you're looking at application and services, they actually have to use infrastructure. And some of the infrastructure is tailored specifically for, for some applications and services. And unfortunately, we have reached a point where the application and service and the infrastructure is used. The value of the application or service is not really related to the type of infrastructure it's using. This talk of 3G, 4G, 5G, wherever, is archaic, it's, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense. That is, you can actually make more money on, say, USSD or SMS than 3G, 4G, whatever, in terms of value of the application. You have to be creative. The more creative you are in coming out with a very good application, irrespective of the, the medium you're going to use, the, 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 the more value will be created. So the most basic would be, say, voice channel, for voice services, which basically all the the operators are providing, but there's also another opportunity for other types of services like interactive voice response systems for, for specific applications, etc. SMS gateways, this uses a different type of channel control signal, USSD gateway, the USSD and USSD2 gateway, GPRS, H3, G, HSTP, 4G, and then what? What next? It's just a, a medium of, transform, of transmission. Wi-Fi, WiMAX, FM radios, they'll be coming back. They're not gone yet. That band of FM will have more uses. And everything which can provide communication or can, can, can make people communicate can be used actually to run applications and services. I would say that there is a lot of opportunities. When you have plenty of services, the ones I mentioned, and plenty of platforms, you have plenty of opportunities. Google was not the first search engine, but it revolutionized the whole business of search engines. Facebook was not the first social network. There were others before it, many, many years. But they came out with a good idea, so I always say there's always plenty of opportunities. I like talking beyond mobile, and there's a reason why I talk beyond mobile. That is, if you come out with a very good application which ran, which did run on Symbian operating system five, three years ago or so, say this is my application. 
then come Android, we say ah, Android will die, this is the thing of, of the future, etc. And then boom, somebody else uses that different type of platform and he will be able to give a better service using whatever platform which will be there. So I'm actually looking up at, at a list of scenarios and I'm sure somebody else will look at this part of innovations, my colleague who will be following up. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking questions. What mobile devices or an icon on a device, will, are we going to have a mobile phone as a device 15 years from now? Or there will be just a device with, 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 with whatever name and capable of providing us voice service? Or will it be a computer? What, what will the computers of 15 years from now look like? What will the television look like? The car of the time, the house, the school, and mind communication. Uh, will we be there by that time? I like thinking when minds are connected and you don't have to know any language because you'll be communicating directly at a different layer or interface. What this tells us is that there are opportunities instead of tying your ideas to a specific technology, you should tie your idea to where there is value. When you can create a value, that's, that's, it will protect you against this, whatever happens in the future. And I would say that development of technology is highly disruptive. You can't predict it. You can't say that I'll focus my energy on this type of platform and these resources and I'll be protected for the rest of my life. No. Coming back to number one, application and services in rural areas. As the government is actually having big plans to putting up put up infrastructure in rural and underserved areas. We need application and services which can actually address specific problems of the rural areas. <coughs> that type of group with low income, low population density, low literacy. How can we come up with application and services which would be able to address these three problems? There are other problems like lack, lack of power, lack of other support infrastructure. If you are, if you are, if you are putting up a training platform, you say, okay, it will help the farmers in a specific areas. Do you know how difficult it is for these farmers to actually transfer their goods from where they are actually tilling, the world, from where they are actually getting them in their farms to the nearest market? These are the issues we have to address and see that the applications and services should be appropriate to. To, to, to what these guys in the rural areas actually are, are, are how they can, uh, they can work with, with application and services. So, briefly, that's what I wanted to share with you. And uh, I, I apologize, I've been very quick in my talking, and I see so many surprising faces. I hope I'll be able to make up for this quick speed during question and answer session. Thank you. <laughs>